From horrible engineering flaws that led to tragic bridge collapses to windows crashing down from skyscrapers, here is our fourth part of the most expensive construction mistakes in the world. We begin with number four, the horrific Mississippi Bridge Collapse. Bridge collapses can be the most devastating incidents of infrastructure failure. They are often the result of engineering and construction flaws or lack of maintenance. In this case, both reasons probably played a big role in the disaster. On August 1, 2007, the so-called I-35W Mississippi River Bridge collapsed into the Mississippi after 40 years of operation. More than 100 cars and 18 construction workers plunged 40 meters into the river. The disaster that remains one of the biggest tragedies in Minnesota history killed 13 people and injured another 145. The collapse started when the center span suddenly started to crumble, followed by other sections of the bridge. In the aftermath of the incident, many issues about the bridge came to light. The eight-lane structure had already been classified as structurally deficient, meaning that it was in desperate need of repairs. However, it was found that the bridge could still have survived if not for one other critical design flaw. The installed gusset plates, which join different beams and sections of the bridge, were found to be only half as thick as required. In addition, the investigation also found that nearly 300 tons of construction equipment was on the bridge at the time of the collapse. This, along with rush hour traffic, strained the structure further and the thin gusset plates could not hold the bridge together any longer. Findings of the investigation were followed by multiple lawsuits, and $52 million was paid to the victims of the bridge collapse. To make sure this tragic collapse doesn't happen to other bridges, the state legislature raised $2.5 billion for a bridge improvement program. Close to $250 million out of that fund was set aside for contracts to rebuild the bridge. Number 3. The Skyscraper That Almost Caused a Tragedy Constructed in the 1970s for around $120 million, the AON Center was the tallest building in Chicago. But the height of 346 meters wasn't the only thing impressive at the time. Also, its facade, consisting of Italian marble slabs, gave the AON Center a unique appearance. However, later on, this unique marble proved to be a very costly and dangerous mistake. It was soon found out that the marble slabs were too thin and started cracking right after they were attached to the facade. Just weeks after the tower's opening, one of its shaky marble blocks loosened from the facade and fell down. The falling block weighed about 160 kilograms, or the weight of a full-grown lion, and crashed into the roof of a nearby skyscraper. Fortunately, it didn't hit the street, and no one was injured. Questions were raised over the structural stability of the tower itself. However, the architects stressed that the problem was only with the facade, which they secured to avoid further blocks falling down. Over the next few years, Chicago's temperature swings caused the thin marble slabs to bow outward again, and they started cracking. That's why, in 1985, they decided to attach steel straps to keep the blocks from falling down. But this only proved to be a temporary solution. Five years later, the whole exterior cladding had to be refaced. The marble slabs were replaced by much thicker granite panels at a cost of $80 million, or almost a quarter of the total cost of the skyscraper when adjusted for inflation. But the AON Center wasn't the only tower built in the 1970s that had objects falling out of its facade. There were other buildings having similar problems, like Chicago's CNA Center, which was completed a year earlier. The windows of the CNA Center started cracking due to thermal expansion and endangered the pedestrians below. But in 1999, something really bad happened. A window on the 29th floor cracked and killed a 37-year-old woman. After the terrible incident, a lawsuit started, which settled $18 million, and every one of the building's windows were replaced. Thermal expansion caused similar problems for a Boston skyscraper completed in 1976, as the windows of the famous John Hancock Tower started cracking as well. Some of the windows fell out and crashed onto the pavement. That's why the streets around the high-rise were closed during high winds. Ultimately, they had to replace over 10,000 windows to fix the problem. What do you think of this video so far? Do you know of other massive construction mistakes in your country? Let us know in the comments below. Number 2. 
San Francisco's radioactive problem. This shipyard was supposed to be the site of San Francisco's biggest redevelopment project. The former Navy Yard in the city's bay housed the largest U.S. facility for nuclear research, and in 1945, components of the atomic bomb Little Boy were loaded onto a heavy cruiser from there. In the 2000s, the U.S. Navy wanted to clean up the radioactive waste at the site, and plans to transform the former shipyard were made. These plans included over 12,000 new housing units, several parks, and offices. To put these plans in motion, a company named Tetra Tech was paid $250 million in cleanup contracts from 2006 to 2012. Meanwhile, two different contractors were tasked with building homes while the cleanup work was done. However, the shipyard's future was thrown into uncertainty after allegations of a cleanup fraud. Starting from 2012, multiple whistleblowers came forward with accusations that Tetra Tech faked the cleanup process to speed things up. According to the allegations, workers from the company falsified data by using soil samples from clean areas and passing them off as soil from contaminated areas. Two years later, Tetra Tech admitted to falsifying soil samples and blamed the problem on individual employees. The U.S. Navy agreed to a revised plan to get rid of the still existing contamination. And at the same time, the first portion of the land was handed over to property developers to start building houses in the area. By 2016, more than 200 homes had been developed and even transferred to residents. Land transfers continued and new residents kept moving in. However, an independent review of Tetra Tech's data showed they had faked more soil tests than previously thought. The review found that almost half of the previous cleanup work was based on false information. A further review by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in 2018 found that the Navy had understated the scope of the problem. Based on these results, the development was put on an indefinite hold. By that time, at least $1 billion had been spent on cleaning the shipyard, and more than 350 housing units had been sold for about a million dollars each. As the project was put on hold, many lawsuits followed, seeking up to $30 billion. The homeowners sued the developers, who then sued Tetra Tech, while Tetra Tech sued the U.S. Navy and the EPA for lack of evidence. And it gets even worse than previously thought. In 2022, a San Francisco grand jury reported that the shipyard will face a new problem. Previous cleanups might no longer be effective because of rising groundwater caused by climate change. The strategies of the past were premised on the idea that the dry areas of the shipyard will stay dry. However, rising groundwater has the potential to mobilize inactive contaminants in the soil. Overall, the project faces a massive delay. Most of the housing units at the former shipyard were supposed to be delivered to homeowners by 2020. However, a majority of these transfers won't happen until at least 2026. The project's future remains uncertain for now, and the cleanup mistakes mean that at least a billion dollars spent on it have gone to waste. For this video's last project, we take a look at another bridge collapse, which is one of the most devastating in the world. Number 1. South Korea's Horrible Bridge Disaster Constructed in 1977, the Seongsu Bridge was built over the Han River and connected the Seongdong and Gangnam districts of South Korea's capital. Repeated overloading resulted in one of the biggest disasters in Seoul's history as the Seongsu Bridge collapsed on October 21, 1994. One complete slab between the fifth and sixth leg of the bridge came crashing down more than 50 meters and landed on the water. One car, a van, and a bus were in the middle of the slab as it collapsed. In addition, some cars fell off the edge and sank into the river. 32 people died in this accident. 29 of them were passengers on the bus. The investigation to find out how this could happen was immediately ordered. Originally, the bridge was designed for vehicles under 36 tons. However, over the years, traffic increased during Seoul's rapidly increasing urban sprawl, and loads of over 47 tons per vehicle were allowed. The biggest cause was found to be lacking welding work on the steel trusses of the suspension structure. The bridge supports had begun to rust, and the overall condition was deteriorating. In addition, the structure wasn't maintained accordingly, despite multiple warnings. All these reasons combined to result in this tragic collapse. 
In the aftermath of the accident, seven city officials responsible for maintaining the bridge were arrested. Meanwhile, the city mayor was forced to step down. While the collapse of the Seongsu Bridge was the biggest in Seoul, it wasn't the first accident involving a bridge collapse in South Korea. Similar collapses had occurred at least eight times since the 1970s, including three on the Han River. Under immense public pressure, the government started an emergency inspection program for bridges all over South Korea. Meanwhile, a plan to repair the Seongsu Bridge was put into effect. However, it was soon found out that the structural weaknesses made it impossible to repair the damage. The bridge eventually had to be demolished and rebuilt. The new bridge was completed three years after the collapse, and it was designed to maintain as much resemblance to the original bridge as possible. However, the memories of that unfortunate morning in 1994 remain with Seoul's residents to this day. If you found this video interesting, make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. This video is a part of our Construction Mistakes series, so make sure to check out the other parts for more.